Hey, Grow Family. Uh, good to be with you. Excited. I'm not Daniel, but this is Dr. Dan. So I'm excited for this. What do we got today? Five minutes of theology. Um, well, I wanted to uh, focus on this press on kind of idea. Which makes sense because we're spending the next few weeks in this series. Yeah. So yeah, yeah give us some give us some insight there. Um, so I, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel, Damon, Damon over the weekend talked about um, pressing on being this idea of moving forward. Um, I, I just want to push in a little bit in regard to, uh, in regard to that. So the word that's translated uh, press on uh, can mean to pursue or to chase after. Uh, so it's actually it actually includes in its range of meaning the idea of persecuting. So persecution would be, you know, in, in relation to this word is the idea of pursuing someone, doggedly pursuing someone uh, for ill purposes for uh, for negative kind of kind of reason. So you got the positive and the negative side of that. The positive side is this idea of uh, of, of focusing on something so you have the ability to press towards it. Mm. Um, so pursue it. Ch so relentless chase pursuit after almost, this yeah. relentless pursuit of what's what's in your in your focus. Mm. Um, so it's it's uh, it's deeper than just movement in a certain direction. It is really going after something, and uh, and that's I think that's what Paul is suggesting here. Which is kind of interesting when you think about. I mean, Paul just kind of talked about all of his qualifications earlier on in this chapter of what made him the Hebrew of Hebrews. I mean, he was self admittedly the persecutor of the church. So yes. that word, yes. he understands what it means to yes. persecute, to chase yes. after. Yeah. And he's flipping that now to give you something else to, which is in the preceding words. Yeah, that's great. Words, that's that's right? great to kind of make that connection there. So That's interesting. What about the one thing? I mean, we talked a good amount about that this, this weekend. Um, yeah, can we go deeper on that? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's important to to get that. So so uh, so Paul says one thing. Actually, the way it reads in the Greek is "but one thing," mm -hmm. and then he jumps into that. And uh, I th I think it's easy for us to maybe miss the one thing because there are three verbal ideas uh, in the verse, and we usually say the one thing, and then we talk about. Three things. Yeah. Um, so this is a point where I think the grammar, and it's not just just Greek grammar. Uh, we should be able to see this in our English translations as well mm -hmm. to see those verbal ideas: forgetting, stretching forward, and pressing on. Um, so those three ideas are in in that verse. So mm -hmm. so he says, but one thing, and then he you know gives, he gives three <laughs> three things, but grammatically. Uh, I think he shows what the one thing is. So uh, the main verb of the sentence, and I think if you if you can stop and think about it, you can kind of see which one is the main verb. The main verb is the press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God. The forgetting what's behind, the stretching forward to what uh, to what is ahead are dependent ideas. They're dependent on the main verb of the sentence, which is the pressing on. So, uh, so not. I mean, the forgetting and the stretching forward are a part of of what he's talking about, but they're more the way we do the pressing on. Um, and uh, and I think here it's it's I think key to understand that. This pressing on has to do with where your focus is. Mm. So the, what's preceded this passage is him talking about knowing Christ and the power of His resurrection, mm. the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to His death, those kinds of ideas. This idea of knowing Christ, he describes it as the surpassing value of knowing Christ. When we have that locked in as our, you know, as our goal, he uses the word goal here, and it's it's the same word that we've seen several times in Philippians that Daniel's mentioned it several times um, in regard to scope, the the mm -hmm. idea of keeping something in your sights. Yeah. Um, so um, so it's important to keep your eyes focused that way, impressing in that way, because if we're if we're constantly looking at what's behind us, if our goal is really 
if our goal is here somewhere and we're maybe glancing over our shoulders at this goal for the prize of the upper call, we're occasionally looking at Christ. Maybe on Sundays we're focusing for a little bit on Christ. We're That's just kind of looking over our shoulders at this, what should be our primary goal. And, um, and when we do that, we're going to move in a different direction. We're not going to be moving in the direction of this goal that Paul's talking about. We're going to be, um, you know, you'll see it in the passage this weekend, we'll be focused on earthly things yeah. instead of on uh, heavenly things on Christ. Um, but, but even what he says that we need to press on towards, it's towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, Paul's just stacking these ideas on top of each other, and I think um, I, I, I think he probably, as he says this, he's, he's turning to talk about, uh, in the passage this weekend, citizenship in heaven, uh, where we have a Savior um, who's, who's the real focus. Um, as he starts thinking about that, he kind of turns his attention in that direction to talk about it. Uh, I think he's just got chills going up and down his spine as he just thinks about this time when he'll he'll enter the presence of of Jesus in um, in uh, in his heavenly kingdom. Yeah. And so he's just stacking these ideas on top of each other and enraptured yeah. by uh, by what's ahead of him. And he's, he's so saying, excited. He's just like, he's so and excited. this, and this, and this, which we all do in our minds. Or, um, so think. there's his goal. I, I, he's locked He's locked in. Here's, here's where I'm focused on. And because, the, because I'm focused here, then that's, where I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to pursue in this life. And in, in whatever I do throughout this yeah. day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live my life focused on Him. And I'm going to be pursuing Him. I'm going to be chasing after uh, Him in every way that I can to, today. Um, that I, that I, I see as the one thing, hmm. the one thing that Paul's saying, this is it. This is it. This is what this is what I got to focus on. Um, yeah, I, th- I think that's a great way to start this series. Um, this press on. I think it's beautiful, and I think it's great context because we're spending the next six, seven weeks. We're finishing the book of Philippians in this series, and so having this idea of relentless pursuit of Christ, of the Father, as we even focus on some of these verses that will come like. Uh, Philippians 4.13, and this idea of contentment, it gives us this framework of what Paul's talking about, like, hey, relentlessly pursue this Christ, yeah. and here's the things that will build that, and excited to see how that will encourage us and push us towards faithfulness and walking with Christ together. So, thanks, Dr. Dan. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. Your time thank together. you. So-